These are elected officials from all around upstate New York who have agreed to come today to speak at this press conference. And uh, just wanted to get them up here so that we can have a um, photo op. Okay, we got them? Why don't you take a seat then and we'll start the press conference. <laughs> My name is Adrian Kuzminski. I'm the moderator of Sustainable Otsego. And uh, can you hear me? And uh, Sustainable Otsego, along with uh, Catskill Citizens for Safe Energy, Bruce Ferguson, uh, together we organize this press conference. And I want to thank Bruce for helping out. Um, let me make a couple of brief remarks, and then we'll hear from the elected officials. Uh, in a little more than a year, an unprecedented, astonishing, and largely unreported grassroots resistance to fracking for natural gas has developed across New York State. In municipality after municipality, citizens have organized to oppose fracking in their communities, and their elected representatives have responded by exercising their powers under home rule to pass moratoria and outright bans on fracking. This resistance, remarkably, has cut across party lines, bringing together Republicans, Democrats, and independents alike in defense of their communities. This movement has not been led by federal or state politicians, not by regulatory agencies, not by a political party, not by mainstream environmental organizations, but by local citizens and the elected officials who represent them. It has become the single greatest obstacle to fracking in New York State and it continues to grow dramatically. We are here today to recognize those local officials who have responded to their constituents and to hear the story they have to tell. At this point, as you will see from the maps about to be presented, hundreds of municipalities from Albany to Buffalo have invoked their home rule rights either to ban fracking within their jurisdictions or to impose local moratoria on fracking. Many others have movements working either for a ban or for a moratorium. New York State, in fact, has become the epicenter of a growing resistance to fracking both nationally and globally. In addition to local officials, we will also hear some clarification of the legal issues involved in what has so far been a successful defense of home rule bans on fracking in the courts. We will present these maps along with the lists of New York State communities, which are down here below, uh, which have taken action on fracking, to the governor's office after this press conference. We hope the governor will seriously consider the reasons why so many communities have banned high volume hydrofracking in New York State. We call on him to meet directly with the serious critics of fracking, something he has not yet done, before making any final decision on this enormous issue. Uh, then without further ado, our first speaker will be Karen Edelstein from the Ithaca area who has put together these maps. Karen, where are you? We've got a couple of minutes. <laughs> so um, as Adrienne said, my name's Karen Edelstein, and I am doing this work as part of the work that I do for, um, for fracktracker.org, and I'm the New York State liaison to that organization. Um, Fracktracker's mission is to collect and analyze data related specifically to shale gas drilling, primarily in Pennsylvania and New York State, but also nationwide. I've been curating a list of municipalities that have implemented bans and moratoria, as Adrian said, um, or have movements focusing on enacting similar protective legislation protect, to protect those communities from some of the risks associated with large-scale industrial activities that would include high-volume hydraulic fracturing. Just a year ago, about in July of 2011, I made a map for a short presentation that was to show what towns and villages and cities had protections in place. But what I didn't realize was at that time um, the map would be outdated within a matter of days. Over the subsequent 11 months, there's been an unprecedented groundswell of these local laws across New York State to exclude hydraulic fracturing from local communities. I've documented a 250 percent increase in the number of municipalities that have implemented bans in less than a year. In that same time, the number of communities with moratoria has ballooned an amazing 800 percent. 
And compared with last year, there are close to 300 percent more towns and villages where prohibitions are currently under discussion. So how many communities does that represent? Well, you can see from the map here and the list below, but just to put some numbers on that, um, at last count, there were 28 communities with bans in place, 89 with moratoria, and 72 with, that were in some stage of discussion about implementing prohibitions. Almost weekly, communities are added to this tally, and this map here, which I created on June the 3rd, is, um, and recently printed, now should be revised to show the addition of several more communities, including just last week the town of Enfield in Tompkins County, who passed a moratorium. According to the 2010 U.S. Census figures, the population of towns over lying on top of the Marcellus Formation, the population is about 2.8 million people. And nearly a third of that population, 870,000 people, are living in municipalities that currently have enacted bans or moratoria against hydraulic fracturing. Now the Utica Shale Formation, which you can see in the lighter green hatching here, extends way far north of the Marcellus Formation and continues all the way into Quebec. Um, and though there are very strong indications that the Utica Shale is also in the crosshairs for shale gas extraction, the popular media, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the, the popular media don't often discuss this as much as they do the, the Marcellus. However, the population over the, the Utica Formation is about 6.4 million people. And there are many, many towns who lie over the Utica Formation who do have um, laws now and over the last year that would permanently or temporarily ban hydraulic fracturing um, if that drilling occurs in the Utica Formation because these towns happen to be north of that Marcellus line. That covers an impressive 1.3 million people in New York State who live in those towns over the Utica where there are bands, um, and that's about a fifth of the New York State population over the Utica Shale. By comparison, if the proposed Esquis is approved, the 150,000 or so residents in Syracuse and the 8 million or so residents in New York City would enjoy watershed protection and drinking water um, because the DEC has suggested that both Syracuse and New York City watersheds would be off limits to natural gas extraction. The data that I'm showing here represents how municipalities across New York State have one by one attempted to put equivalent protections on their, on their communities. There's one last map that I want to direct <coughs> your attention to, and that's showing that the upsurge in laws prohibiting hydraulic fracturing has not just been limited to New York State, but it's really, at this point, it's a global phenomenon. Um, entire countries, including several states and one province in Canada, are calling for prohibitions. Right now, Bulgaria, France, and Romania, as well as Vermont and New Jersey, have banned the practice outright. And South Africa, Maryland, and Quebec have implemented moratorium. <coughs> Access to safe energy that puts public and environmental health first and foremost is a conversation that is now happening all over the globe. Thank you. Next speaker will be Mayor Matt Ryan of Binghamton. <coughs> Thank you. I'm very proud to be here today with so many uh, committed officials, town, village, and city officials who have uh, worked with their council, respective councils, to pass moratoria or bans. We passed the ban, a two-year ban. Uh, that's all we could get city council to vote on. It was a two-year ban. It's now caused us, uh, we are being challenged legally. We did it under our police powers to protect our sole source aquifer, the Clinton Street Aquifer. Um, they're challenging it, saying we had to do 239M review, which I know a lot of you would understand who've gone through the ban procedure. Um, and, and we hope to um, prevail. If we don't, we'll go back to the drawing board. I just want to reiterate this is a great strategy. I think we should continue to work for bans because it will show the governor uh, that how many towns, villages, and, and citizens uh, um, care about this. However, he told Fred Dicker the other day, 
we may overrule all these bans. He didn't say how, but that's what he said. So uh, we've got to be very careful that this isn't the only strategy we use. We're not sure what the higher courts will say about these bans. We're hopeful that they will go along with the Dryden and Middlefield uh, uh, courts or, or Supreme uh, Courts that have ruled on this, but we're not sure. We need to put pressure on this governor. He is, this is clearly being done in a backroom deal like we know everything else happens in Albany. Who's spending all the money lobbying in Albany? We know how much money every other ad on TV is about the oil, the safe uh, natural gas industry. They're spending millions and millions and millions of dollars, and that, that all, you know, funnels into the lobbying groups. Uh, this governor needs to know that he's been, that this is an environmental, uh, uh, first of all, he's talked now last week about making us a, a, a uh, zone where uh, sacrifice zone that's what people are calling it well you know, and and he must be basing on what Senator Libis is saying because Senator Libis came out right afterwards and said well I have third this is good news for my 30,000 landowners he calls them my 30,000 la landowners however there's 170,000 other people in Broome County and we need to be we need to get the message out we we have to do a lot of grassroots it's not good enough to pass a ban we have to continue fighting we have to convince the state legislators the state senate the assembly and the governor that this s guys is not adequate because if it's scrapped and they go back to the drawing board that will give us a lot of time by that time we will know a lot more about this industry this industry is in its infancy we've seen the devastation it's put in Pennsylvania Wyoming and it's not just the drilling at first they were you know even Robert Kennedy Jr. was saying this is our uh, bridge to a safe energy future he's backed off of that considerably we have to put pressure on the NRDC because they are cutting backroom deals because they want to give the governor something they want to give them something and they're and they're and that's what's going on right now we've got to make sure that there's pressure put on all all the groups that are participating in this backroom strategy to make sure that this is about the people have making the decision this is uh, you know if you try to separate and it's a divide and conquer strategy uh, if you try to separate um, you know the different parts of the state uh, it, that and we are uh, target one for them because we're right across the border from Pennsylvania. Uh, but we know that the price of natural gas is so low right now. Why are they even thinking about drilling in New York State? It's because of the Millennium Pipeline. They got to get to the Millennium Pipeline. And why do we have, need the Millennium Pipeline and now the, con uh, the, what do they call it, the new one, the Constitution Pipeline? They're all going to the coast. This gas, that whole thing about this being a na about national security and having our own oil and gas supplies is totally debunked by the fact that they're now liquefying this and selling it to uh, at a much higher price overseas. So we need a strategy that's really going to put pressure on the governor. He's not going to get a. You've got to get let him know he's not getting a free pass on this if he doesn't make the right decision to at least. Uh, say that the S guys is not sufficient. That we know uh, not only on uh, uh, the propane uh, component of it, which uh, some people are talking about. There's been nothing done on that. On a mortgage part of it, where people's land values are severely uh, um, impacted, that the, the S guys doesn't go into that in any detail. The health impacts we all know in the hearings, like the health department was saying, "Well, what do you know about this?" Well, nothing. Nobody said anything. Does. You know, this is so, this S guys is so, uh, has so many problems with it. If we can get the S guys to, uh, the more, keep the moratorium in place and get the S guys to be seen as not sufficient and go back to the drawing board, then we've, we've won a battle. This is great. I, I applaud all of you, but we cannot just sit on, uh, on this alone, uh, I would suggest, and, 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 and win this battle. So uh, remember what the governor said, we might overturn all these. So let's work hard to make sure uh, Barbara Lifton deserves a great deal of credit. She's fighting the battle in the assembly. Uh, the Senate, I'm a little worried because if your focus is a ban, this governor, I'm telling you, will never sign a ban. It won't happen. I, I don't believe it will ever happen because we know where he wants to go. We know what his strategy is. He'll be, you know, but we've got to convince this governor because on a lot of, a lot of grounds, he's, he's been very pro-environmental. He's got a great Green Jobs, Green New York program. We have to applaud him for that. And we have to make him understand that 
this is going to undo everything, every good thing he's ever done for the environment. This is the crucial issue of our ever in the history of the New York State environment. His father once said, I was talking to a reporter who's been around for a long time the other day, and back when his father was governor, uh, on this, uh, there was a little conversation being had, and he was, they were talking about the flight of people out of this area to, this, um, to the Sun Belt, to Arizona, to Florida, and what this, uh, they asked him, are you concerned with that governor? And the governor said to them, you know, they'll go, but eventually they're going to come back because we have the best water in the world. And he saw, and he saw that. I hope Governor Cuomo listens to his father and understands how important this issue is. Thank you. Next speaker is David Bliss, supervisor of the town of Middlefield. I um, hope you'll bear with me. I didn't realize I was speaking today, so I'm not prepared really. But um, as Adrian said, I'm Dave Bliss, supervisor of town of Middlefield, and uh, I'm here to talk mostly about home rule and the rights of towns to uh, zone and regulate uh, their communities as they see fit. Uh, a lot of people think this is a reactionary, you know, the, the bans on hydrofracking are reactionary, and I can't speak to other towns, but I know in our municipality, we've had uh, zoning regulations since 1975, and uh, over the past 37 years, they've been revisited, the, home, the uh, master plan and the zoning regulations have been revisited several times. I've been supervisor now for 21 years, so I've been a part of several of those revisions, and uh, I can say unequivocally that in Middlefield, Right from day one, the master plan and the zoning regulations were uh, specific, and the overwhelming support of the community was to specifically ban heavy industry of all types, not just uh, uh, hydrofracking and gas and oil drilling. So we're, you know, we we hope the governor will support our uh, concept and the visions of our town to keep heavy industry out. Uh, the, the vision of the town has been, as I said, overwhelmingly in favor of. Uh, keeping it a rural, agricultural, residential community. Uh, we're, we're, our economy is heavily based in tourism, agriculture, and health care. And uh, heavy industry doesn't necessarily mix well with those. He mentioned the water and the clean water we have. Uh, our, the border of the town of Middlefield extends along the whole eastern shore of Otsego Lake and about 12 to 15 miles south of the Susquehanna River to Milford. That's, you know, 20, 25 miles of uh, waterfront. Many people don't realize the Susquehanna River is the largest river east of the Mississippi, well over 400 miles long, and that watershed you know, drains into the Chesapeake Bay. So things that happen up here are going to affect a large area. So uh, as I said, I'd, I'll, I'll be brief and be happy to go. It's beautiful weather out there, and I, I got hay to bail. <laughs> Next speaker is Linda Levine from town of Dryden. And it's good to keep it short, Dave. Thanks. Mine's short. Okay. Hi. Well, I haven't met Dave before, but uh, nice to meet you as our partners in crime here. So um, my name is Linda Levine. I am a member of the town board of Dryden, New York, in Tompkins County. And um, I want to say on behalf of our town board <coughs> that we are encouraged that Governor Cuomo recognizes the right of communities to decide for themselves how they develop, according to his latest statements. Um, I hope he means it. Uh, but more than that, we hope and believe that our suit going forth, both in Middlefield and in Dryden, um, will provide the clearest structure for this. But we could use a little help from our friends, like Barbara Lifton. Um, like uh, more than 100 other municipalities in New York, Dryden has acted on that right and implemented limits on proposed drilling like Middlefields. Um, they've come out of a long-standing plan for what we saw as the purpose of Dryden. While recognizing local control and home rule in the DEC's gas exploration permitting process is a step in the right direction, Governor Cromo must go one step further. He must now ask the Senate and Assembly to pass Assemblywoman Lifton's bill clarifying the home rule issue. This will save communities like Dryden and Middlefield enormous amounts of money as we are all threatened with frivolous lawsuits. 
Furthermore, we all know the impacts from gas drilling do not end at county lines. Tompkins County, for example, uh, borders on Tioga County, um, just as they do not end uh, at property lines. We intend to continue to exert our right to protect the people in our town from the impacts of nearby gas development. The people of Dryden want to preserve the town they love and the special character of our town and make sure it continues to be a healthy place for generations to come. Thank you. And uh, I, I, to the extent that it's not widely known, um, we have wonderful representation from Earth Justice uh, in the form of Deborah Goldberg, who is an outstanding legal mind. And so it's nice to know that um, between uh, the various legal representations we have, I believe we have a very, very strong case going forward, plus the wonderful decisions of the two very different um, and uh, certainly not uh, out of mainstream judges who came up with such wonderful reasoning that supported our initial cases. Next speaker will be Don Barber, supervisor of the town of Caroline. Good morning. I want to tell you a story about democracy in the town of Caroline. One year ago, members of a citizen action group called Rouse, residents opposed to unsafe shale gas extraction, informed the Caroline Town Board that they were circulating a petition to demand that the Town Board pass a ban. In response, one of our Town Board members stated, uh, brought forth a resolution that stated that the Town Board would become neutral on the gas issue. So in July 2011, uh, the Town Board held a public meeting to accept comments and 250 people showed up to speak. Over 90% of those people spoke with comments opposing this resolution. The town board listened and the motion failed. Then in September, the Browse Group presented that petition with 1,146 adults signing, which is roughly two thirds of the population, demanding that gas drilling be banned in the town. The demographics of the signers matched exactly the demographics of the age, location, and party affiliation of the, of the total populace. The resolution to comply was moved and seconded. Hence, another public meeting asking to hear comments. 150 residents showed up this time, and again, over 90% spoke in favor of the resolution. But this time, the majority of the town board did not follow the lead of their citizens. The motion failed. Two of the three town board members opposing this resolution were running, were running for re-election that fall. So the citizens responded on election day defeating the two incumbents by a two-to-one margin with candidates that were campaigning in support of the ban. This is the most lopsided election in Caroline's recent history. So the newly seated town board adopted a moratorium in March of this year, and which provided us time and space to work on local laws to protect our roads, aquifer, finish our site plan review, and develop a ban local law. In April, the town board rolled out a ban local law, has held public meetings in both April and May, and again this month to work on the language of this law. So every story has lessons to be learned, and these are lessons I'd like to share with not only the governor and the New York State legislature, but all elected officials. One, everyone experiences the impacts of natural gas. Impacts on the community, on the existing economy, on the environment, and on their safety but well, only a few receive the benefits, which is the reason why the majority want protection. Number two, local governments, being the closest to the people, seem to be the only level of government left to protect the civil society from the excesses of corporate energy. And three, officials that don't protect their citizens will be replaced. And four, the most important, Voters are as powerful as corporations. Thank you. Next speaker is Liz Thomas from the town of Ulysses. Hi, my name is Liz Thomas. I'm the deputy supervisor and a town councilwoman for the town of Ulysses, which is, uh, lies aside Cuga Lake um, in the Finger Lakes region. 
um, and our zoning um, started in 1960, so we beat you by 15 years. Um, became, we became the first town to enact um, zoning in our county. Our comprehensive plan was from 1999 originally, but it was officially updated in 2009, and we're currently adding language um, to our zoning to further preserve the fragile, steeply sloping lands that lead to the lakeshore. So we have a history of zoning, within, and within that history, the town has never allowed heavy industrial uses of our land. We're a rural residential community dedicated to the local foods that are produced in our region. And where good food is served and landscapes are stellar and communities lively and clean waters abound, so follows an active tourism trade and a vibrant economy. The town board of Ulysses is absolutely unwilling to trade these desirable traits to those who would extract natural gas by means of a heavy industrial activity, hydraulic fracturing. This gas is not meant for local use. Instead, much of it will be supported to the world market. So should towns such as Ulysses um, bear the brunt of a scattered national energy policy th that neglects future generations in exchange for the short-term wealth of a minority living today? By observations of other states where hydrofracking is allowed, this method has shown to pit neighbor against neighbor, depletes the local workforce, drives up rental costs, um, and most critically, can impact the environment in very negative ways. The majority of our residents uh, draw their drinking waters from private wells and, and Cuga Lake. The question still remains, can these waters remain untainted? Mounting evidence suggests not. Our job as elected officials is to protect the health, safety, and well-being of all of our res residents. How can we say we're doing this when studies question the safety of hydrofracking? We need comprehensive studies on health effects, on how wastewater will be safely disposed, how chemicals and gas are finding their way into water supplies, among many questions left unanswered. We want to be part of a safe, sustainable, long-term plan for energy as we move into the future, currently lacking, which is why our town board voted unanimously to reaffirm through our rights of home rule that zoning, which previously prohibited heavy industrial activities, continues to do so including those activities associated with the extraction of natural gas. As an elected official, that's my job, and it should be the job of the governor, the assembly, and the state senate, too. Thank you. Next is Bill Goodman from the town of Ithaca. Thank you, Adrian. I am Bill Goodman. I'm on the town board and, and the deputy town supervisor for the town of Ithaca in the uh, middle of Tompkins County. And we passed a ban uh, almost a year ago now, working in conjunction with the towns of Dryden and towns of Ulysses. And, um, and because we are surrounded by towns that have passed bans or moratoria, you, you might wonder why we're still concerned about hydrofracking. But we believe that that the issue of hydrofracking is is not just an issue of home rule, but also an issue of uh, environmental justice. We believe that even folks who might be in a minority in towns where the town boards won't pass a moratoria or a ban are entitled to fresh air and clean air and clean water. And so we support um, a continued moratorium at the state level because we believe that as more people find out about the dangers of hydrofracking and we learn from the experiences of Pennsylvania and other places where it's happening, that we'll see a lot more red on this map. A lot more towns around the state will, um, will learn that it is something that should be banned across New York State. And we'll see a lot of the uh, yellows turning to red and we'll see a lot more yellows and pinks up there as well. Um, and I believe this will happen because people are really starting to wake up now as I mentioned, in Tompkins County, we started banning about a year ago. <clears throat> but even a year ago, um, there were folks in upstate New York who, who I know who weren't really attuned to the dangers of hydrofracking. I grew up in uh, the town of Van Buren in Onondaga County, northwest of Syracuse, and have a lot of family and friends still up in Onondaga County. And they're now just starting to become worried about it and starting to talk about um, creating some movement in their localities. And, and <clears throat> this is not uh, just a uh, Democratic or uh, a one-party issue also because the family that I grew up in is Republican and a lot of my friends up in the Onondaga County area are Republican. And the Republicans up there now are starting to get worried about hydrofracking. So I believe that the state needs to keep a moratorium in place 
because we will see a lot more bands coming in the next year <clears throat> and not just in in the Tompkins County area but throughout the uh, upstate area thank you my path to being a councilwoman was no accident it basically came about from my activism and push for a ban in town of Otsego in my town there is a large majority of people who understand the multiple threats that this unconventional drilling presents people across the political spectrum young old financially stable and people who are struggling they understand that the most basic need of living things is clean water and air they get it nationally and at the highest level of our state government there's a big problem though because what's guiding our energy policy, as, as Mayor Ryan so eloquently stated, are glossy gas industry ads, political contributions, money to lobbyists, basically spin, not science. What's guiding our leaders is not what's most important, most critical to biological and economic health, but what's expedient, basically what they can get away with. What the gas industry is allowed to do now with their exemptions from environmental safeguards should be illegal, even criminal, but it's not, thanks to the Halliburton loophole. Does New York State have the foresight, the vision, and integrity to lead by banning this at least until those toxic exemptions are overturned? That would be a good start. It would change the conversation. It would begin to get this industry on a course that is at least approaching responsible. So responsible towns are acting because our state is failing us. Our governor logically exhorts us to pay attention to science on this issue. We are is he, is Commissioner Martens. I exhort them to carefully study the contributions of these scientists and researchers, Anthony and Graffia, Robert Howarth, Janet Barth, Susan Christofferson, Theo Colburn, Ron Bishop, Michelle Bamberger, Robert Oswald. Everybody knows these names here because we're paying attention. And please take another look at the 2011 Duke study showing that on average water wells within a kilometer of a gas well had 17 times the methane thermogenic methane from deep shale than wells outside that range. So wouldn't that imply that a kilometer is at the very least a minimal setback from a home or a public building? Governor Cuomo suggests that our state is unclear on home rule by posing this question in a recent interview. What's the state's relationship to a local government and how do you weigh home rule on this? Very disturbing what you just told us, Mayor Ryan. So for clarification, I suggest you take another look at the Middlefield and Dryden decisions delivered in February. And what part of protection of health, safety, and welfare does he not understand? I say anyone asserting that environmental or health concerns are overblown is very, very sure that they personally will never be bothered or by ruined or flammable water, by relying on non-potable water and plastic buffaloes, by their child's asthma worsening, by headaches and nausea brought on by elevated levels of VOCs in their blood, by their pet's death from lapping industrial waste that's been spread on roads, or by the failing health and reduced reproduction of their dairy or beef herds from toxins in their water. This is all happening in drilled communities, and our governor is saying this is okay. I ask the governor to do the right thing and ban this. If you're unwilling to be part of the solution to fix the problem, at the very least, honor every New York State town's right to make land use decisions for their community. We are not trying to regulate the gas industry. That's not our job. Please do yours. Stand up for local democracy and support home rule now. This is New York's chance to lead and the nation is watching. If you're truly paying attention to hard science and data over political science, the choice is clear and don't fail us. Next is Bob Eklund from the town of New Lisbon, also in Otsego County. Bob? Hi. I'm a councilman from the town of New Lisbon. I'm a member of the Green Party. I say this because my town is, on paper, heavily Republican. Yet, they supported me two to one in recent election, knowing that if elected, I was going to sign a ban. We do have a ban in place in our town. Our town is not like Mayor Ryan's. We don't even have a stoplight in our town. Uh, <laughs> it's very rural, a lot of farmers that, that are struggling on their farms. There's a lot of people that enjoy the outdoors, hunters, fishers. I've been called everything from environmental terrorist to environmental jihadist, um, a bunny hugger, a tree hugger. The only trees I hug are the ones I carry in to put in my wood stove. That's how I heat my home. Um, 
the point is that across the line, no matter the political party, independent, never voted before, the local elections in my area had the highest turnout in recent memory, uh, specifically due to this issue. Um, I'm here to call on Governor Cuomo and the legislature of New York to enact a statewide ban. Uh, that is the only thing that will protect everybody. Everybody in this state deserves equal protection. We also, um, I made some notes here. I believe that clean air, fresh water, contamination free soil, and living conditions above the level of a third world country are our right, not our privilege. Our, our representatives, our governor owes it to the people, to the children who can't vote, to the elderly who want to retire here. He owes all, all these things to us as a people. To suggest that there be an area in the state that should be sacrificed to prove that this questionable industry is safe is ridiculous on the face of it. I would have no problem telling that to Mr. Cuomo if he was here right now. Um, We've all heard the claims and counterclaims dealing with the uh, safety and economic viability of fracking. The bottom of every claim is a desire to make profit. I'm not against making profit. I like money. I wish I had more of it. I don't want to make money at the expense of my neighbor's living conditions. The industry continuously asks us to socialize the risk why they privatize the profit. That's unacceptable. We do not need to sacrifice our health, our property values, our infrastructures so a few multinational companies can make a profit and leave here in a few years and the cost of remediation far outweighs any profit the state may make. So once again, as councilman from the town of New Lisbon, this little red box in the middle of Otsego County, I call on Governor Cuomo and the state legislature of New York to ban hydrofracking in New York State. Thank you. Next speaker is Bill Elsie, supervisor of the town of Springfield, also in Otsego County. Bill. Thank you, Adrian. I'm Bill Elsie, uh, supervisor of the town of Springfield, which is at the north end of Otsego County, adjacent to Otsego, where Julie Huntsman is from. And um, where are you from, Dave? Sorry, Middlefield, where Dave Bliss is from. And um, we are at the very north end of Otsego County. Uh, we're at the headwaters of Susquehanna River and Lake Otsego. Um, and I'm going to give you just a brief discussion of, or a brief explanation of how we came about the ban that we have in place against hydrofracking. Um, about January of 2011, um, at a town board meeting, we began to discuss hydrofracking as something that we probably didn't want in our town. We have a comprehensive plan that was adopted in 2009. And that comprehensive plan calls for the preservation of agriculture and a rural environment in our town. Um, as such, we felt it was reasonable for us to move forward with a ban on heavy industry. Um, we went through the process of discussion and formulation of that law for two months in February and March. We had two public hearings in April and May at which over 90 percent of the people who appeared, and we did have a large turnout, probably 150 people out of the 1,300 people who live in our town. Um, I think we had four people who spoke against the law, and in June we adopted it. Um, like other people who have spoken here, we have a broad spectrum on our town board of um, political affiliations and um, uh, employment backgrounds, and yet everyone on our board was in support of this law, it passed unanimously, and I might also say when I brought the issue of this press conference to our board last week, they voted unanimous, unanimously to send me here to represent the town. Um, so I won't speak on a personal level, although I agree with most of the other speakers here today that I would like to see it banned on a personal level, I'd like to see the process of fracking banned in New York State. However, I will say that since I represent the board, uh, I'm not sure that everybody on the board agrees with that, but we do believe that every town has the right of home rule and that if we don't believe um, fracking is the right thing for our town, we should be able to stop it without the state interfering. Thank you. Next is James Dean, uh, trustee of the village of Cooperstown.
Thank you, Adrian, and thank you all. <clears throat> On April 25th, 2011, the Board of Trustees of the Village of Cooperstown, New York, approved a resolution that supports all efforts to stop hydrofracking in New York State. Hydrofracking is incompatible with a bright new high quality future for New York State. The village of Cooperstown and the surrounding area has hundreds of millions of dollars of long-term investment at risk of collapse if hydrofracking comes to New York State. Cooperstown is a major national and international tourist destination. We depend on tourism, clean air, clean water, and a high quality of life to attract visitors, new residents, new businesses, and investment. Hydrofracking would bring incalculable economic devastation to our historic village and to our world-class attractions, which include the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, the Farmers Museum, the Fenimore Art Museum, the Gloom and Glass Opera Festival, the historic Otisaga Resort Hotel, Bassett Healthcare, and Otsego Lake. Our losses would far exceed, by orders of magnitude, the completely unsubstantiated potential gains put forth by the gas drilling industry and its supporters. Hydrofracking in New York State could put the village of Cooperstown and much of New York State into a permanent recession. Cooperstown is a major economic, cultural, and tourism component of New York State. We work very hard to be the best that we can be. We expect our opinions and concerns to be heard and to be very seriously considered when decisions are being made for the future of New York State. We have the right to self-determination and we have the right to home rule. New York State will be repopulated and it will become a major economic force in the future of this country. If for no other reason, than that this is where there is abundant, clean, and safe water. Hydrofracking could foreclose on that future. The West is drying up, and so may much of our food supply. The cost of transporting food long distances is increasing every day. Agriculture and moving more locally sourced food to an even greater population center will again play a very important part in the future of New York State. To allow hydrofracking for some spotty short-term gain while putting much of New York State's water supply at risk of being potentially undrinkable for thousands of years makes no sense. Hydrofracking is an irresponsible, get-rich-quick, pump-and-dump Ponzi scheme that has nothing to do with saving New York State and everything to do with enriching national and international investors. The village of Cooperstown, New York, supports Governor Cuomo in almost all of his efforts to make New York State the great empire state again. And we want to participate in making his vision a reality. But we cannot support any decisions that will bring hydrofracking to New York State. Thank you. We have a couple of more speakers. Is Justin Riccobono here? Okay. Um, is Dominic Calcellaro? We're now switching from the rural back to the urban. City of Albany. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you all for coming to Albany, and we welcome you here. And my fellow council member, Anton Konev, is also here. Uh, just briefly, um, we th thought it was important that the capital city pass the, the ban uh, through our zoning. Uh, we think zoning is very important. Um, and if the municipalities, you know, we're, we're the closest to the people. And if we don't have the right to determine what, what the people we represent want, then they might as well, you know, eliminate all local governments and just say the state of New York makes every decision for everybody. And it doesn't matter what your residents say and what your constituents say. It means nothing because we're going to make those decisions. So I thought the two court cases were, were very well done. They both judges researched. They went back in the history to, to follow the history of, of the, uh, the New York State Constitution, the Home Rule 
uh, Article 9, uh, local governments, and they did a great job. And the other thing with Albany, too, we passed it. We have uh, our waters considered one of the best in the country. Last year we were in a national water contest. We finished in the top five in, in the country for water. Now, water isn't located right in the city. It's about 18 miles south of Albany, but it's in Albany County. And I talked to our water commissioner a few months ago, and he said, what happens if one of these fracking trucks, uh, bringing the chemicals or the sand or the wastewater back out, happens to have a little accident next to our reservoir and tips over. There's only one road, and it goes through the reservoir that's divided. He said we'd be in big fracking uh, trouble <laughs> um, if that should happen. So we need to send a message. The governor lives here. Actually, the governor actually lives in the ward I represent when he's in Albany. The governor's mansion's in my ward. And listen to the people. And, and you know, DEC, everything's okay in Albany because of the capital. And DEC is just two blocks down from City Hall. The capital's right here, a block, a half a block up from City Hall. And listen to the people of Albany. We had hundreds of people that came out over the course of our discussion. The mayor vetoed the ordinance originally. And following the two court cases, we were able to get enough support on the council to have a, a veto-proof um, vote, and this time went into effect. And I, I just thought the message had to be sent that the capital city, the state of New York, where DEC is located, where the governor lives when he's in Albany, says, you know what? The people don't want it. We don't want it. The state doesn't need it. And like I said, clean air and clean water is a lot more important than uh, some industry destroying our countryside and our, and our local land. So, again, I want to thank you all for coming, and I, I appreciate it. Thank you. We're running short on time. If, if Anton Conniff would like to add a word or so, and also uh, Leah Webb from Binghamton, uh, if, if you want to add something, this is, the this is your chance to do so. If not, we'll, we'll go on ahead. We'll go on ahead. I've, I think I think Damit said it all, but uh, okay. it's a, it's a, it's a question about we, get, uh, we shouldn't take a gamble for somebody's profit, uh, and that's what that's what this whole big thing is about now. Is the gambling industry seems to win, and the industries in in uh, our state seem to be on the winning side, but it should be on the people's side. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Bruce Ferguson now, and uh, Bruce will take it from here. Hi, we're almost done. We have two more speakers, and they're both going to talk about the law uh, and that underlies this. We all are here because we believe the law supports home rule, uh, but that wasn't always the case. If you'd been working on this issue for three or four years, you would remember a time when virtually every lawyer who looked at uh, New York State law had come to the conclusion that ECL 23, the environmental law, uh, superseded uh, the town's right to drill, uh, to uh, ban fracking. Uh, the law in question read, I'm going to read just the um, phrase, the provisions of this article shall supersede all local laws or ordinances relating to the regulation of the oil, gas, and solution mining industries, but shall not supersede local government jurisdiction over local roads or the rights of local governments under the real property tax law. Now, a lot of people looked at that and said, you can't do it. Uh, you cannot zone out uh, fracking, you can't ban it, uh, your hands are tied, the state is in control, the state is going to make these decisions. Th there's been a sea change since then. Uh, one of our speakers, it's going to be Assembly uh, Member Barbara Lifton, who introduced home rule legislation, which many people feel is still very important because it will underpin, going forward, the rights of towns. We have two court decisions on our side so far but we don't know how this is going to play out in the upper courts. And there's a really scary statement that was made by another New York attorney last week, and I'm going to read that. This attorney said, you could override local government, or you could say, well, we're going to respect home rule if it is co coincident with the obvious and necessary ramp-up period anyway. This incredibly cynical remark that seems to say, oh, home rule's fine as long as it doesn't get in the way of fracking, was made by Governor Cuomo just last Thursday. And this, I think, underscores the need for further legislation to absolutely pin down the fact that no one, including Governor Cuomo, can override, <coughs> can override home rule. And Barbara Lifton, assembly member, has a bill to that effect. Barbara, would you say a few words, please? Morning, everybody. I just came here to listen to all of you. I wasn't planning on speaking, but um, I'm, I'm happy to say a few words and especially to thank you all for coming down here. 
uh, and speaking so eloquently. Thank you for all your work, you know, all the talk about emotion versus science. It's so clear all of you, and I know so many of your constituents have done the hard work and the research over a long period of time, and you know uh, whereof you speak. And I hope that your eloquent voices are heard strongly here in Albany, in the governor's office, and at the DEC. Um, <clears throat> Um, we could get into a lot of detail here, but I'll just be um, f keep it fairly quick and simple on the local control bill that I authored um, at you know as we did the research that local governments were asking us to do, um, and my counsel here, Jordan Lesser, has done a tremendous amount of work <coughs> on that, and on the Amicus brief we filed in the Dryden case, and it seemed it was very clear to us after we did the research that indeed. Home rule is strong, alive and well in New York State. Our Constitution is extremely strong on the home rule issue. And the case law that we looked at, many, many cases uh, in relation to mining and drilling is just another extraction industry, right? They're all extraction industries. Why would we say that mining could be uh, restricted and prohibited entirely in a municipality? And the much bigger, you know, monster, if you will, of high volume hydrofracking could not be addressed by local governments. Uh, and of course, we believe that the legislature did not expressly overrule uh, uh, local control in this. So my bill would codify that. It is perfectly in line with the court decisions, with the new Supreme Court decisions. Um, it parallels those court decisions. It's passed the assembly. My bill passed the assembly again this year. Unfortunately, there is not a uni bill, uh, the, the, the exact same language in the Senate bill. The Senate bill that's currently out there uh, would weaken, actually, the court decision uh, in the Dryden and Middlefield cases. So uh, obviously, it's on appeal, going to continue through appeal. I'm hopeful that the uh, higher courts are going to um, look at those very well thought out, very careful decisions at the local level, at the Supreme Court level, and, uh, and again, uh, say very strongly that home rule is still in effect. Now, let me just clarify quickly, as I said last week, John Campbell's probably tired of seeing me at this point, but <clears throat> when I released the letter that I'd done with 75 assembly members and senators last week, both houses, both parties, um, that letter was about all the problems that remain in the Eskice and that those issues must be addressed and a consensus of New Yorkers, which we are nowhere near achieving, has to agree that this process can be done safely in New York without hurting human health and without destroying water. We are nowhere near accomplishing that kind of consensus. So that's the first goal, to make sure that happens. My position is withdraw the Eskice, many, many serious problems that have not been addressed. And then down the line, if we all say it's safe, then we can talk about locals being able to say, sure, come on in, but not until that point. Thank you very much. Thank you again. For As I mentioned a minute ago, uh, three or four years ago, virtually no one said you can ban fracking at the local level. That conversation began to change around 2009, 2010, when some lawyers looked carefully at the language about supersession of regulation and said, wait a minute, zoning is not regulation. Regulation of fracking is things like well setbacks from uh, water sources or homes. It's well casing, but it is not zoning. And there was a very important, influential article came out, co-authored by an attorney at the form of Whiteman, Osterman, and Hanna, uh, that argued that uh, zoning is not regulation. As this came forward, uh, a, many other lawyers began to re-examine their uh, conclusions. Everyone, of course, at this time was working without legal precedent because there had been no case law yet. We hadn't had Dryden. We hadn't had Middlefield. Um, the firm of Whiteman uh, continues to work on this case today. They filed amicus briefs in both Middlefield and Dryden, and some of the language in their arguments was directly picked up by the judges in both those instances. And today, uh, Whiteman, Osterman, and Hannah is handling the appeal in the case of Middlefield. Uh, so from the firm of Whiteman, Osterman, and Hannah, Rob Rosborough. Thank you. Uh, 
thank you, Bruce, for the introduction. I appreciate it. My name is Rob Rosborough from Whiteman, Osterman, and Hanna. I, I worked uh, on the amicus brief below at Supreme Court, and basically where we started with the legal process was with the, inaction, with the enactment of the bans in Middlefield and Dryden, those bans were challenged on, under the environmental conservation law, which, as Bruce said, contains a provision dealing with uh, state supersession. It says uh, all local ordinances and local laws that regular that relate to the regulation of the oil, gas, and solution mining industries shall be prohibited. And what the position that we've taken is that home rule in this state is constitutionally guaranteed. There's a comprehensive uh, legislative scheme enacted by the legislature to codify those powers that are guaranteed under the Constitution to let a town, a village, a city assert their right to determine what kinds of land uses are permissible within the town. The Supreme Court judges that have considered this issue to this point have agreed. I mean, the, both are well-reasoned decisions and have addressed the po home rule powers very significantly going back a number, number of years, not only in the legislative history and saying that the plain language of this statute supports the home rule powers of uh, municipalities. In our view, this is a, a, a fantastic, a, opinion for the, the towns and it's the right interpretation in our view of the law. Uh, these decisions have been appealed. They're at the appellate division now and there's currently a motion to argue pending before one of the Supreme Court justices. Uh, we're confident going forward that home rule powers will be, will be upheld uh, on appeal. And I want to thank you all for, for being here. Uh, it really means a lot to all of the municipalities that you would support home rule. Thank you. That concludes the presentations. If anyone has a question um, and they want to direct it to anyone in particular, uh, I suggest the person who's going to answer the question come up here and stay up here until we're done. That way there won't be a lot of popping back and forth. Uh, so does anyone have a question for anyone in particular or in general? Sir. I have a question for Barbara. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seeing that uh, a Belleville is a ban, has no sponsors in the Senate, really. No majority sponsors. More, in no the majority Senate. sponsors in the Senate. And that apparently your great work on home rule also really has no uh, comparable. Four sponsor. days to go. It's Four looking days. bleak, I have okay. to say, in the Senate. Then, what is our best strategy uh, to go forward to st stall this industry <coughs> as long as we can? What is our best strategy? Well, we do have four days left, so I hope everyone pressures the Senate in the last four days to do uh, all the bills that the Assembly's done. My local control bill, the hazardous waste bill by Bob Sweeney, and another moratorium bill. We're clearly not ready for this. Uh, so when beyond the legislature, I think the other effort that's um, the main effort has been to say uh, there are all these outstanding issues, the issue of wastewater treatment and disposal, um, the issue of the lack of a health assessment, and on and on. And many of you listed the other many other concerns, uh, methane gas release and so on. Um, and uh, so then, then, then it becomes a, a more political outside the legislature kind of uh, issue of, of pushing again with, with the governor and the DEC to say we have to withdraw this document. Uh, this industry is not ready for prime time in New York and, and push them to, uh, to go and look at those issues and, and not allow permitting at this time. Many issues obviously need much more study. Did I answer your question, Matt? Yes. <laughs> and, and of course, we're going to see more um, activity at the local level on this. I, I suppose that we'll uh, and we'll see more people in the towns and uh, cities and villages looking at uh, their local zoning and, and their local town boards and uh, legislative bodies and saying, "Well, we've got to exert political pressure there too." I have one other question. Yeah. <laughs> well, if if um, if these bills fail, if we don't get sponsors and uh, uh, and. As you read the, the, a disappointing statement by Governor Cuomo about uh, well, uh, what he might do with home rule, how, how um, what do you think that uh, a legal challenge will, uh, you know, say the courts agree with us, uh, the governor somehow tries to do some kind of thing, how long do you think we can, uh, is there a good legal battle that will delay this as well? Well. I mean, I think we are in the legal battle, and I'm not without hope that, that the higher, highest courts, the Court of Appeals, will, will be on our side on home rule. And that'll, be, that'll win the day. Unless you, you, then you would have to have a legislature that would overturn home rule explicitly on this. And I don't think that's going to happen, at least not in the Assembly. Um, so that final court decision would, would 
be the final word on home rule. Let me also say on the Senate that I was interested to hear from Monroe County that a whole bunch of people were at Senator Robach's office uh, the other day, and he apparently came out and said he supported a ban. Um, and I don't know quite what that means. I've been looking for a press release. I haven't been able to find it. But, uh, but if we can get one Senate Majority Senator to uh, come out, perhaps there's uh, opportunities uh, elsewhere. I have a question. Um, there has been this flurry sponsored by the industry of town boards uh, saying that they're voting to do nothing. Um, is there any meaning to that? Perhaps this is a question for uh, Rob back there. Rob, Bob back there. It, it would seem as if that's a, 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 a meaningless void statement. Uh, well, I mean, it, it's a it would, it's in line, I believe, with the town's right to decide what it wants to to permit and not permit within its within its borders, and, and it goes to home rule. I mean, it, you know, with home rule powers, the town by their town board and through their residents get to decide what they want to permit and what they don't want to permit depending on whether that's a land use or some other type of uh, use in their town and that's so I, I don't believe that it would have any impact on the legal challenge as it is uh, but it's it's another exercise of the home rule powers I'll add one thing to that one of the nice things about home rule I think is that it only cuts one way it only cuts in our favor towns can prohibit fracking but they can't do anything more to invite it in other than just make a resolution that it has no bearing, no legal standing, it's just air. Uh, the, the law only cuts one way and it cuts in our favor. But, but when, just on that, in our area, most of the little towns, several of the little towns around us have passed those resolutions, yeah. most at the end of a meeting, not when it wasn't on the agenda. Uh, our, our county attorney had back in when the county executive, former county executive was trying to lease land in Broome County, she, uh, uh, th there was a legal opinion that came out of her own legal office that said, however, that legislators and things who have conflict of interest to own land or part of land owners coalitions should not speak or vote on, on any of these bills, and, which leads me to believe that the, if that's true, then, you know, just for, to show that this is, uh, you know, that this really has no legal standing. We should be challenging, possibly be challenging them the legitimacy of the votes because all of them have conflicts of interest, everybody on the boards. So, Can I add something as well? I think as Don Barber said, that this is really an exercise in local mass democracy. And there were some statistics were given, and there are many more, <coughs> overwhelming majorities in town after town after town when this has happened. And I, I, as far as I know, that is not the case in any of these other towns that have passed sort of pro fracking. Right. I think these have been sort of maybe backroom deals sure. or, or whatever, but they have not had uh, uh, the passive populace. Uh, uh, so, you know, the people have not spoken, as far as I know, in any of those decisions. <coughs> Can I make a comment, too, that I should have made when I was up at the podium? Um, Springfield does not have a zoning law. Uh, this was done entirely under police powers. Uh, if you know of towns that are reluctant to pass laws like this because they don't have zoning, I don't see any reason why they should be reluctant. Um, this law is a standalone law. We will have zoning someday, I suspect, but at this point we don't, and um, there's no reason why a law can't be passed without a zoning. Without Mayor zoning. Ryan, do you have a comment on that? Police well, ours, ours also was passed yeah. under uh, police powers and they are challenging us uh, you know we'll see what the courts have to say about that um, but we did it to protect our sole source aquifer which we believe we have the right to do that um, but there were we are being challenged uh, you know I think that the challenge against us is because I'm telling you this is being decided in back rooms that's why this whole thing came out Senator Livis is very good friends the governor said he's my favorite senator he wants to um, He's trying to give him. Uh, he's trying to give him that area, and and he's yeah. he's got the governor convinced that my people want it. Well, I'm telling you, there's a lot more people that don't want it, so it's it's got to be a grassroots thing. But they want to challenge Binghamton uh, because they know that this is a part of the whole strategy. I'm sure that Senator Libis has been on the phone to all these little towns saying, "Pass this, pass this," because then we, the governor will have cover to say, "See, they want it down there. This is a, a depressed area." But the reality is we have a great uh, research institute at BU that's a whole focus now is going to be uh, energy, uh, clean energy and, and technology. That's the way we want to grow our economy. So we got to, you know, the other thing is we got to do as a movement, I think, is somehow we have to get economists involved and say, how can we improve 
the uh, the uh, the economic climate for for these landowners. How can we get them to have so what solar arrays, uh, uh, the biodiesel fuels, growing biodiesel fuels, a, a, a plan for them so they can see that because it is a depressed area. And if we don't offer some other solutions, well, that should be part of what we're doing. I think I'm, I don't know enough about it, but I think there's probably people that do that should be working hard to present an alternative because really. I, I was an environmental studies major, taught environmental law for uh, 10 years at BU. Uh, you know, alternatives often get a very slight part in an EIS. This is one where they should be getting another thing that should be severely highlighted because Germany, three weekends ago, produced 50% of the power for their whole country for a weekend by solar power. We're being left behind. We're, you know, that, we got to get that message out there. That that we need. And if Governor Cuomo really wanted to set himself apart for 2016, he's got the green jobs, green New York, he should say, we're not going to do this industry. We're going to be the we're going to be the template for the whole nation for a sound energy policy. And then he would be separate himself from all the other governors who are doing all the same things. We need somebody to step up. And I think that's another message if we can get to his ears that he should be hearing. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, no one has anything else. Uh, a lot of people traveled many, many hours to get here. Thanks to all the elected officials, to Assemblymember Lifton, to Karen, to Rob, who didn't travel very far at all because he's in Albany. But thank you all so much for coming today. Thank you. Thank We have a present for the governor. A present for the governor? Okay. Yeah, we do. That's for us. No, it's that, it's that one. This is a map showing the 4,500 square miles of New York State that are already protected by municipal bans, which the governor indicated last week he has contempt for because he says he's going to respect it while it's convenient, which is outrage. It's a settled law now. We have two court decisions on this side. He should, he's an attorney. He should understand the law, and he should look at this map and realize these people will never vote to re-elect him governor and will never vote for him as president. Yes, you can. And here's a list of the towns that have enacted bans moratoria and are in the process of doing so at the rate of two or three a week. This is spreading like wildfire. It's going to burn him if it does not pay attention this to it. This is the global resistance. All right, well, thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. you. Thank you. We, thank you. Does anyone have a press kit to give the gentleman? Uh, yes, give him a press kit. Where's a press kit? I have a press kit. I think I said.